Well, I think a lot of people are concerned about the direction of interest rates. They've risen significantly over the past year, year and a half. And of course, they may continue to go higher. So how do you know where interest rates are likely to go? What's a quick and easy way to do some analysis to figure out the future direction of interest rates? It can have a big effect on your decision to buy a home, a car, those sorts of things. Well, this week, I'm gonna show you the two important charts to look at to determine where interest rates are likely to go. Plus, I'll do my normal analysis of the stock markets, the currency markets, crypto, figure out where those are likely to go, and then look at the day trade of the week on ACAD. So are interest rates gonna go up or down in the future? Well, they've already made considerable gains, and I'm gonna show you a couple of charts in a moment that predicted that rates were gonna go higher and really gave the warning sign that you should lock in your mortgage at a fixed lower rate if you had a variable rate before it went up, that sort of thing. It also has a big effect on the stock market. So understanding where interest rates are gonna go is important for your stock investments as well. You know, the stock market did really poorly in 2022, and the main reason was interest rates went up a lot. It makes it more expensive for businesses to borrow money. It also makes people spend less, which has an effect on the uh, success of the economy. So the chart that I like to look at is a chart for the U.S. Treasury bond market. It tells us what the investors in bonds are thinking, predicting about where future rates are going to go. And they tend to be very good at predicting what the U.S. central bank is going to do on interest rates. They often price in rate increases before they actually happen. And so if we watch the chart of U.S. Treasuries and just apply some basic analysis techniques, we can figure out the likelihood that rates are going to go higher or lower. So let's jump over to stock scores. And here we have a chart of the 20-year Treasury bond ETF, symbol is TLT. And you can see that this has been moving down for well over a year. And it really started to move down right in there at the start of 2022 when it broke this little upward trend line and moved down. Now the way it works with interest rates is that if bond prices go down, which is the chart we just looked at, it was going down. If bond, price, uh, bond prices are going down, that means interest rates are going up. So the chart I like to look at is actually not the TLT, which I just showed you, but instead it's an inverse ETF of TLT. The symbol for that is TBT. So let's jump back to stock scores and punch in TBT here. TBT, these are free to look at on stockscores.com, my website. And if we do a three year chart of this, you can see that it went up a lot, which is basically telling you that interest rates went up a lot. And they started to go up right there in early 2022, right when the TLT was going down, the TBT started to go up. And this is really what interest rates were doing. Interest rates went up. They took a little break there in the middle of 2022 and then went up even more. And then they started to pull back. Now, let's do some analysis of this chart. First thing you want to notice is that the upward trend line for interest rates was broken at the start of 2023. That meant that the expectation that interest rates were going to go up a lot more has really diminished. So we have instead gone into a sideways trading pattern on TBT, which means the market's expectation for future rate increases has diminished. But it also says that there's not much expectation that interest rates will go down. We're in a sideways pattern. If this chart breaks out through 32, then that means the market thinks interest rates are going to go up with the next Fed meeting. And if it breaks down, that means the market thinks that interest rates will start to decline. So this is the most important chart to look at, the simplest one to look at, if you're trying to predict rates. Now, the other one that's important is for the U.S. dollar, because if interest rates in the U.S. are rising, then it makes it more desirable 
to hold US dollars because you can hold US dollar debt and you get the increased interest rate. So the chart that I like to look at for the US dollar is UUP. And you can see that it's done something very similar to interest rates. It went up parabolically as interest rates were rising. And then early or sort of the mid to late 2022 going into early 2023, the US dollar started to break down. So it actually started to predict that the bond market was going to stop going down and interest rates were going to stop going up. I know it gets a bit confusing, but the US dollar predicted that before it actually happened. Now again with the US dollar, it's been in this sideways range, much like interest rates. But what's noteworthy is this past week, the US dollar had a fairly sharp drop. Now it hasn't gone through this floor yet, but if it does, the US dollar may be predicting that the cycle of rising interest rates is going to come to an end soon. And in fact, we could see actually a pullback in interest rates. So just watch these two charts. I do it every week here in the Market Minute, so make sure you're subscribed to the channel, turn on the notifications bell. It's free. Every week I do this analysis and I'll give you my sort of sense on where interest rates are likely to go by looking at the US dollar, by looking at that TBT chart. All right, let's get into this week's market analysis and uh, we'll just jump over to the S&P 500. Here is the daily chart. You can see the S&P 500 is in an upward trend. A little bit extended to the upside wouldn't be unreasonable to get a little pullback, much like we had in the middle of June, but the trend is up and so that's a good thing. If you look at the one month chart, you can see it's generally heading up, so it's a bullish short term time frame. And on the long term three week time frame, we are also in an upward trend, so the buyers are in control. I expect that we will continue to go up until we hit resistance from the highs of uh, late 2021. Let's take a look at the Canadian stock market now. It looks quite different from the US market. You can see on the Canadian market, we've been going sideways all year and it's had a lot of volatility, which means a lot of uncertainty, but really directionless. Looking at the three year chart, you can see that the upward trend in the Canadian market was broken early in 2022 and it's really been a kind of a stagnant, wishy-washy market since then. Can't really find a good direction. Now in the very short term, we have had a little bit of gain, but it's very volatile. And again, if you've got volatility in the market, what it really means is that investors are uncertain. So while there's confidence in the US market to buy and accumulate stocks, in the Canadian market, it's not that way. It's sort of trading. You know, people are in and out, but they're really not buying these stocks for trends in the market overall. Let's take a look at commodities. We're going to start off with um, USO, which is a good proxy for oil. Three-year chart. You can see that it had a parabolic upward trend that was broken right around the time the Canadian market started to break down, right around the time the US dollar started to break down. We've seen Oil prices slowly head lower, not sharply so. Now in the last couple of weeks, we've seen a bit of strength. So we're starting to see some recovery in oil. And I've noticed that there are some improvement in the charts of oil and gas stocks. I don't think they're great yet, so I wouldn't really jump into them yet. But it's something to keep an eye on because many of these oil and gas stocks are breaking their downward trends. They're just not yet starting upward trend, but we'll keep an eye on that as time passes here. Let's take a look at gold, GLD, another one that had a little bit of strength this week. And a big reason for this is that the US dollar fell. So if you're a person outside of the US and you wanna buy gold, gold is priced in US dollars. Well, if the US dollar goes down, then that makes gold cheaper if you're buying it in US dollars. But of course, gold went up to sort of compensate for the drop in the US dollar. If we see more weakness in the US dollar, then we could see more strength in gold. That's how they tend to be inversely correlated. Not always, but often. So in the long-term time frame, the three year, we still have a long-term upward trend. We've had a fairly sharp pullback and now we're starting to break the pullback. And I think you could see gold go back to the highs in the next three or four weeks 
moving up towards that uh, 190 level on the ETF. Looking at the one month chart, you can see the downward trend line was broken on Wednesday from some rising bottoms. So it's a somewhat positive signal, short term signal for traders of gold and gold miners, precious metals in general. All right, how about the US dollar? We did this already, but let's just do some analysis. There you can see the big drop the past week on the three year chart. You can see we're at the bottom where support is. We'll probably bounce off of that in the short term. But you wanna keep an eye on this chart because it could be telling us something about the future of interest rates in the US. Now the next chart I'm gonna look at is GBTC, which is for Bitcoin. And you can see that Bitcoin's actually had a pretty good run the last six or seven months. And it continues to be in an upward trend. It's a little bit extended to the upside because we're some distance above the upward trend line. And so it wouldn't surprise me if we get a little pullback in the short term. And I think if you're long any of these Bitcoin miners like HUT, Mara, Riot, uh, BITF, these are all companies that are related to Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, you may see them pull back this next week. So you might want to get ready to lock in profits in some of those trades. Looking at the three year weekly chart of Bitcoin, what you see here is it is still in a pretty good turnaround pattern. You have the downward trend broken, build of a rising bottom break. You just broke a pullback a few weeks ago. I think it ultimately is headed higher, but in the short term, maybe a little bit of a pullback as it winds its way higher like that. Final chart we'll look at is of course TBT, which we already kind of looked at, but you can see the last six months, it's been in this sideways range. Volatility is compressing. And so the question is, are we gonna break out, which means that interest rates are going up, or are we gonna break down, which is kind of what the US dollar is predicting, in which case that would mean interest rates going down. So I always keep a close eye on this TBT chart because it's a good way to predict where interest rates are going to go. So my ratings then on uh, US stocks bullish on both time frames. Canadian long-term neutral, short-term bullish. Gold neutral on both time frames. Oil neutral long-term, but bullish short-term. US dollar neutral long-term, bearish short-term. Bitcoin, I remain bullish on both time frames. And interest rates neutral on both time frames. All right, let's take a look at the day trade of the week. Of course. At Stock Scores, we have a service called Active Live where you can see my algorithms for day trading running in real time. It helps us find stocks that are in play before most people find them. And it's a real great way to catch some of the best setups. And then, of course, I teach with the courses we do at Stock Scores what the strategies are, when to buy, when to sell. You can learn more about that at StockScores.com. Here is ACAD, which gave a few signals on Friday. It uh, made a big gap to start the day. Anytime a stock makes a big gap like that, I like to see it build a pattern for at least an hour because there's a tendency for stocks that make big gaps to try to fill in the gap. They don't always do that, however. And if they can build a base over the course of an hour and then break, it's a pretty good signal that they're gonna go higher. So you had break number one there, and then you had another sideways pattern here with a break right here as well. You can see there's little yellow dots there. That's my indicator. It's called an action candle indicator. And we had pretty good moves on a risk reward basis. It's a more expensive stock, but still making three, four, five RR, which means for every hundred dollars of risk, you make three to five hundred dollars of profit on this particular trade. So that's the kind of thing that we like to do in Active Live. Again, you can learn more about that at stockscores.com. So where do you think interest rates are gonna go? Leave your comments below. Higher or lower in the next uh, three months, six months? I'd love to hear your thoughts. As always, if uh, you're not already subscribed to the channel, subscribe. You get instant updates when I've uploaded a new video and uh, it makes me happy to see more subscribers. So that's a good thing as well. And of course, as always, trade well.